Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble short consultor. So today's t-shirt is brought to you by Corporal for Life. No, I don't have a discount code. No, he doesn't sponsor me. No, I'm not making any money off this video, but I do appreciate and agree with everything he's attempting to do. I bought this t-shirt out of my own pocket. Um, he is a former Canadian Forces member. Uh, and for those of you that have either been involved with or currently involved with the CF, you know exactly what I mean when I say Corporal for Life or CFL. So please, if you happen to like the t-shirt or you want to see some of his other wares, please head down to his website. So that being said, I haven't made a video about my fifth month of my return to work journey. I've made the fourth month. I'm a little bit past my fifth month, so we're just going to do the fifth month video now. So almost a year ago, I had my stroke. Uh, for the purpose of this video, we're going to say five months ago, I started back to work. The first two months were really abbreviated months because I wasn't working full-time hours. I was gradually gearing up. And then I then, for about the past three months, I've been back to work full-time. So for those of you that have had a brain injury or for those of you that have had a stroke uh, or any other form of neurological disease where you've had to, been given the ability to go back to work, you know that certain things become more difficult. Uh, forgive the fact you might have vision problems. Forgive the fact you might have any of the aphasias. Forgive the fact you have other possible communication deficits. Forgive the fact you might have foot drop. Forgive the fact you might have a walker. Forgive the fact you have difficulty concentrating on a task. Forgive the fact you might have a memory issue. All of those combined aren't as bad as the fatigue. And I still still suffer and struggle some days with the post-stroke, the neurological fatigue. Now, granted, some days it's triggered just by the amount of ambient noise around me. So work did get a special noise-canceling headset that has provided some alleviation, but it's not a be-all and end-all. Um, so that can help. I still have to wear fluorescent, or sorry, under fluorescent lights, I still have to wear my sunglasses. So that has been of some assistance. Um, again, I can't predict everything because I just can't. I can't predict or plan or try to scheme around every single event. The fatigue in and of itself, the fatigue can be a disability in and of itself and on its own. I can start out a day fatigued. I can get fatigued halfway through the day. I can be fatigued at the end of the day. Um, I play airsoft as a hobby. So um, a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, I was out playing airsoft on a Sunday because that's the day we usually shoot and we're out in the woods all day and I should have been extremely tired and I got home and I wasn't and I had a, a wretched night's sleep, just a, a night's sleep that was just unimaginable. So I woke up that morning, I got showered, I got dressed with some assistance and as I was putting on my shoes, I realized I did not have the energy to, to, to be with it that day. And I had to kind of give myself permission, you know what, it's okay. It's okay today not to go to work. You had a stroke for one, and, and two, you're not going to be of use to anyone. You are going to be so, I don't want to say the word less functional, because that's not the case. You are going to be not as able as you normally would be on a good day. It's not going to do you any favors to, to try to stay at work on a bad day. So, <clears throat> stayed in bed all that day. The entire day, I was pretty much in bed all day, and that's all there was to it. And that's all I could do to manage was to stay in bed. I feel bad about that. Reality is I don't have a choice. So it goes back to that video I did on radical acceptance. The, the re reality is I did not have a choice. Like, there was nothing else I could do in that moment to make that moment any better. Um, there's nothing I could have done in that moment try to push through because if I just tried to push through it it would have been worse I would have gotten to work and I would have literally gotten in the building and then 
sorry, we're joined by Crash the Wonderbird. He's a bit grumpy. So there's nothing I could have done that morning to try to force myself through it because uh, it just would have devolved quickly. Still have memory problems at work at times, mainly memory of the people around me. I don't remember people so well. In fact, I'm just going to be honest, 80% of the building, I don't know your name. Um, and that's neither here nor there. That's just the reality of the situation. And then there's a couple reasons involved in that, and we'll get into that. I'm almost a year post-stroke, almost five and a half months at this point when the video's being made, being back to work. Yeah, five, five months in a week. I'll be honest, people I used to have daily conversations with, still don't. Um, and, I, and I don't know why that is. Someone the other day at work that I used to have regular conversations with and pretty much non-existent after the stroke, they said something, I was having a bit of a, you know, not a bad day. They asked me, how is it going? So I said, you know, today's not such a bad day. And then, you know, and they said something like, something to the effect that, oh, it could have been worse. And I'm thinking, need to leave now before you have to amputate your tongue because you're going to say something like, it could have been worse? the fuck kind of cracker you want? Could have been worse. Yes, I'm very well aware it could have been worse. I was there. Um, and then the other part of me is thinking, well, where have you been for the past six to 12 months, you know, with my return to work or my stroke journey? I have not really, you've not contacted me in any way to let me know how my journey's been. So you're going to get people that I'm just going to chalk it up to don't know what to say. They're socially awkward about it. They're not properly educated about stroke or brain injury. They're just, they're going to say things that just, I'm trying to learn to ignore. Sometimes a bit more successfully than others. So people may say things that you're just like, what did you just say? Yeah. <clears throat> other people I used to have regular conversations with, they pretty much, I'm still a pariah. People, I don't know, is that a case of, they don't know what to say. They legit just have no clue. Um, they feel bad for not really having been around or interacted with you for X number of months. And they don't know how to say, hey, I was an asshole, I'm sorry. Um, people that... There are people that just don't get it. You know... People that are going to think that you should be better now and just suck it up and get over it. Um, I know there's a couple of those in the crowd somewhere. Um, people that just... I really don't know how to quant quantify it. And, and I'm going to be honest, I don't, I'm not going to run around the building and go, Hi, I really don't remember you. I have no idea who you are. Um, so I'm just going to shake your hand, reintroduce myself. No, if you haven't taken the initiative to involve yourself with me, or we haven't had an ongoing conversation for the, the period of time after my stroke, I'm going to be honest, probably don't need to know you. Like, you've been of no consequence to this point. And for those of us that have had stroke, when you get back to work, you get treated differently. And for those of you that have been back to work after a stroke and you've had sort of the same experience I have had, or you've had a drastically different experience, please, if you feel comfortable, leave comments down below about your experience so we can sort of share um, and, and see if my experience is, is the normal or not. Um, and I appreciate there are days that are deceptively easy, and I appreciate there are days that look incredibly horrible, and I appreciate that I can have a, a great day and a horrible day all in the same week. In fact, I can have a day that starts out a great day and turns into a horrible day. Or I can have a day that starts out kind of eh, and it turns out to be not a bad day. So there's a lot of inconsistencies. A lot of incongruentness at times. And I just accept the fact that a day is going to be a day, and that day is going to be whatever day it wants to be, and I'm not going to try to assign it any value. It's just going to happen. It's sort of the way I have to live my life now. I'm going to hope a day is going to be a good day. Don't don't get me wrong. But I'm not going to try to sugarcoat a goddamn thing. It's not going to do me any service. 
It's not going to do you, the, 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 the person that's also dealing with a brain injury or stroke, it's not going to do you any service just to sugarcoat your days, to placate some other guy or woman or man or whomever, um, to try to make them feel better about the fact that your brain tried to kill you. Sorry, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. But on the upstroke, there's some great news. When I left, um, and because well, I had my stroke, I was a trainer. I had to spend some time proving myself as, a, as an agent again to make sure that I can do the, the agent job. So I can still do the rudimentary functions of the job. And I recently was given permission to um, go back into the training role. Downside of that, I got to start from scratch. As if I was just being onboarded as a brand new trainer. Don't like it. Don't agree with it. But I have to accept that. And the, the radical acceptance video I did helped sort of hammer that home as well, right? Because I don't like it. I don't like the fact that before I left, I was doing off the street new hire training, conversion training from one department to another. I was doing return to work training through any department. So any agent that was coming back off a of return to work leave. I would have helped facilitate their reintegration back into the workplace, regardless of the department. I was doing the up training or the continuous training for multiple departments. Now I'm going to be limited to my department only. And I got to start back as if I've never been accredited before. Don't like it. Can't change it. Have to accept it. Don't agree with it. Don't like it. Can't change it. Have to accept it. I could go into many offices on bended knee and beg and plead. You won't get me any farther. All I can hope is I can be just 90% as, as effective as a trainer as I was before I left on leave of absence. And I, and I appreciate um, the last thing you want is a brain injured trainer who has aphasia and anomia, um, along with a bit of the verbal apraxia, not being able to find the words, can't say things quickly, and it sounds like he's stuttering while he's trying not to forget the content. Yeah, so I appreciate the fact that it's going to help redevelop and reestablish my skills so I can properly reassert myself in a classroom. It's been my goal this entire time to get back into a classroom after my stroke. That's kind of been my goal to get back to where I left. Um, we'll see how effective I am at that. On a corporate level, I appreciate it's a decision made far above the pay grades of the people I was in the meeting with. I appreciate if they might have the ability to change things slightly, they may do so in my favor. And if they could, and, and if they would, that gesture would be greatly appreciated. However, I think it would be at a service to expedite things at times um, because by putting me back basically at the initial certification process, it will help me eliminate any bad habits that I might have developed because of the stroke. It will help me redevelop what skills that I can retain from before my stroke. It'll help me redevelop and, and establish, or sorry, develop and establish new skills uh, in, in effective delivering of a period of instruction. So, and I appreciate the, the methods of instruction that we use. Nothing really complex. It, it's basic lecture format um, with some slides or PowerPoints or videos, um, some physical props occasionally to, for, for the equipment that we might have installed in the customer's home. So, I appreciate the methods of instruction we're going to be using are, are pretty basic, right? We're not having to build models or, you know, like actual physical models. And, you know, I have to bring in a, a slew of training aids and, and, and whatnot. In fact, I don't even have to write my own lesson plans. They're done for me, right? So the master, I just grab a master lesson plan and away I go. No one tells me to go write a lesson plan on this. I, it's everything is given to me. I don't have to do any work about the preparation of the actual lesson. I just have to prepare my workspace, my classroom. So I think it's in everyone's advantage that I start from scratch. And I realize I'm almost immediately accepting the flip side of the argument. Like, why are you fighting through that? Well, I could fight through it. 
I really could. I could try. Just like your velociraptor in my finger right now. I could, I could attempt to fight my way through it. And I could attempt to plead a case. It's not going to be any better. It's not going to get me any farther along. It's not going to make it a working relationship. And it is what it is. There's, I'm just going to play the game by the rules that have been given to me. And if I'm good at the game, I'm good at the game. And if I'm not, I'm not. And if it turns out after all is said and done, that I'm no longer fit to be employed as a trainer, I'll accept that decision. If it turns out after all is said and done, I'm still a reasonably decent trainer, maybe not on the same level as I was before the stroke, I'll accept that. And if it turns out to be a completely unfettered success, where I'm a better trainer now, than I was before the stroke, I'll accept that as well. Ultimately, those are potentially all the outcomes. There might be something I'm overlooking that I can't think of. But, be that me. So, basically, for those of you that are currently going through your rehab, rehabilitation journey uh, after a stroke, and you're considering what it's going to look like in your return to work journey, just... Remember, the only easy day was yesterday. Sometimes the only day that's going to get to be the better day will be tomorrow. And today, you just might have to get through it. Every day is its own unique set of situations. Every day, for the first couple of months, you know, and I still feel this way some days, every day is its own unique individual day and can't really be compared to any other day. And once you sort of accept the fact that you've just sort of got to check in on yourself constantly, those days get easier. I'm going to be working on a series of videos just about return to work and return to work planning. Not specifically for me, but on a, on a more of a global basis. Mainly because I've seen some posts on the Facebooks about people having difficulty with their employers and their employers not really understanding certain concepts when it comes to return to work planning. Uh, mainly, specifically for us that are brain injured or have stroke folk. So, on that note, for those of you that have been watching the channel for the last almost almost a year, right? it'll be a year in about two weeks. And I've been joining the company of myself and Crash the Wonderbird. Please like, share, subscribe. Point the channel out to some of your friends. They might get some value out of the content that I generate. If you know someone that's going through a post-stroke journey or a post-brain injury journey, if you know someone that's supporting someone in their post-stroke or post-brain injury journey, please point the channel out to them. Like, share, subscribe. Hit the little bell dingy so you get the notifications. Get a little dingy 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 when the uh, videos get uploaded. And if you either happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone appears to be befuddled, confused, has lack of balance. Someone has vision problems. They see grayscale. They can't see out of one eye. They can't move their eyes in a certain direction. They only see a little dot in the world. Someone has a facial droop. There's a visual slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who uh, can't smile equally effectively or at all. So in a slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, has an inability to stand unaided, has general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.